Hey everybody, this is Greg from Purpose Blogger. Today I'm going to show you how you can use Canva to quickly create a high quality recipe book, which you can use as a free giveaway to grow your email list. Now I'm going to cover the process from start to finish, and along the way we're going to go over some really smart tricks and tactics for building templates so that the process only becomes better and faster going forward. If you watch this video and adopt these tactics, you should be able to easily create recipe books or just about any other document you want to create with Canva, and you're absolutely going to improve your design workflow and absolutely you're going to save time. So let's jump right in so you can learn this process. So a few quick housekeeping items just for anybody that might be new to Canva before we get started. So if you don't have a Canva account, you can go over to canva.com and you can sign up for a free account. You can sign up with your email, you can sign up with Facebook, with Google, your Google account. So it's really easy to sign up and get started. And you can sign up for a free account. There is a Canva for work paid option. But for anyone just getting started, I highly recommend starting with the free version. It's still really powerful. It does almost everything the paid version does. So it's a really great place to start. So that's the first reason why it makes a great choice to use Canva. The second reason I would say is Canva has a really small learning curve compared to more advanced graphic design software like Adobe Illustrator or Adobe InDesign. These are great programs. I love Adobe programs and those are industry standards for a good reason. But for the average blogger or someone new to design work, they might be a little overwhelming and they might be a little bit of an overkill. So Canva is a great place to start compared to those programs. It's really easy to learn. It's really streamlined and it's really designed for just making new projects, new designs, really fast and really quickly. So Canva is a great choice for a project like this, and we're gonna jump right in now to creating a recipe ebook. But I just want you to remember, even though we're creating a recipe ebook, what we're also doing is just really learning smart templating strategies. If you learn these strategies and techniques, you're really gonna set yourself up to save time with all of your design work going forward. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so here I am logged into my Canva account. Now I do have a paid for work account and a free account, but today I've logged into my free account just because I wanna show you that yes, everything we do today can be done with your free account. So by default, you start on this home screen here and you can type in certain design templates and things you want to look for over here. It has a drop down list and you can also just start typing or you can come under create a design and then it's gonna show you all these different categories and you can scroll over to see even more types of social media. And so it, what it does is it has all these built-in templates and it's gonna provide you with lots of great starting points so that when you have a new design project, very rarely do you have to start from scratch. Now, of course you can, but a lot of times staring at that white piece of paper, especially if you're new to design, that can be overwhelming, that can cost you a lot of time. A lot of times it's better to have a great starting point and then sort of build from there. So I'm gonna go back to the home screen and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this magazine cover option. And when you click on something, then it's gonna show you lots and lots of templates within that category. So now once you click on something, your Canva project window opens. And then to the left, I have sort of all my resources over here and then all the templates over here. So these magazines are gonna make a great starting point, but I know I can search within these templates even farther. So if I type food, over here and we see food and food magazine. So I'll go ahead and select that. And so now I'm seeing magazines, but also it's limited by that food. I figure recipe design, recipe book, that's sort of maybe a good starting point. Now, once you reach this point and you've chosen magazine as your starting point, there are just a couple things for you to be aware of. First, you'll notice that some of these say free, and then there are other ones if you click on them, you're gonna get watermarked images in here. So you see here, this image has a Canva watermark on it. And when you run into images like that, it means that you have to pay for these images if you want them to be part of your final design. But that doesn't rule out all of these templates because what you need to realize and remember is, especially if you're creating your own recipe book, you're almost always for something like this gonna be using all your own images. So the images you see in a design are really just placeholders. And you gotta think of them that way and you're just looking for a layout that makes sense to you. Now, 
some of this this royalty images that you do have to pay for, they can be great for certain design projects if you need images. However, remember for this project, we have our own recipe images, so we're really just looking for layouts that we like. And you notice when I click on something, it goes ahead and it populates over here in my project window for that page. Now, the second thing I want you to realize is if you hover over these, you'll see that some of them start to say things like one of five. And so some of these here are more than just the magazine cover. And if you click on something like that, it will then expand out and then you can click through and you can see, yes, there are multiple different interior pages. So that's really good because for this magazine, I know I want a nice cover, but I also want some interior pages where maybe I'm gonna have a table of contents. And then of course I want my individual recipes. So I'm gonna go ahead and close back out of that once you've cl clicked something open like that. You can just use this X to get back here. And I'm going to start going down through these magazine covers. And again, I'm just going to type in food up here and I have it limited to food items. It looks like it's showing more than food. So let me try this again. I'm going to type in food just to see. And there we go. That looks like that is doing it now. I don't know why it wasn't before. So now I'm going to scroll through and start to find maybe ones I like. And then if I like them, I'm sort of going to scroll over and see if they do have those interior pages. And then I can click on them and I can see they do have interior pages. Like this interior page, that's pretty cool. A nice table of contents. This is a tight night cool um, homepage. But so cover page. So I'm just going to go through a couple of these and then I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. And because I've done this a no number of times before, I've sort of started to find the magazine styles and sort of the templates that I that I like as starting points. This Food Night Notes one I've used before. I like this one quite a lot, but for today, I'm gonna scroll down even farther and let's see if I can find the one I'm looking for that we're gonna use today. So again, you see how many there are here. You really do have lots and lots of options that potentially make really good starting points. So I'm going down even farther. I don't see it yet, but I may have scrolled past it. So let me just go back up here real quick because I suspect that I have just scrolled past what I'm looking for. So let's see, there it is right here. So this one here I find is gonna probably make a really good starting point. So now is when I can start to build out those initial pages that I'm gonna want as part of my final recipe book. So you really wanna be thinking what type of content do I want in this recipe book? Or if you're creating an ebook, think about what type of content you want in that ebook. And then you're trying to build out the pages to represent the different types of content. And this initial stage here, you're not trying to create every single page that's gonna be in your ebook. You're just trying to create individual pages that are gonna be representative of the different types of content you're gonna have within that ebook. So I'm gonna double click that for a couple cover page and then I'll go ahead and add new. And so then it, by default, it's just I duplicated that page. But if I go ahead and click this, now I have my cover page. I have a table of contents page. I'm gonna go ahead and add another one there. I could see this here being a decent uh, intro to a recipe. And then if I add a new page below that, I think I could use this one potentially if I make some adjustments as a recipe page. And then this other page here, I'll just add that in because I could maybe have a thank you page that I could build off that. So I'm just gonna grab those pages real quick. Now I can close this now out now because I don't really need that anymore. I was just using that as a starting point. And so now I've used this magazine project as my starting point. And now from here, we got to build out these template pages to pages that are going to make sense for us, that are going to help us build our recipe book quickly. And as we do that, we're also trying to build a template that will make sense going forward for more projects. Okay. All right. So let's move forward. So our goal at this point of the process is really to modify these templates, maybe adding some things, maybe removing some things, so that we're really set up for a smart, fast workflow when we actually start dropping in all of the content. Now, at this point, I'll talk very quickly about organizing your assets. It's good practice, especially if you're creating something like a recipe book, to spend a little time ahead of time pulling together your assets. So maybe that's exporting all the recipe images you need from, from Lightroom. Uh, and, and the one thing I'll mention is on Canva for work, you do have unlimited folders. So once you upload images, you can sub-organize them in folders. But if, if you're working on the free Canva, one of the limitations is you only have two folders. But you'll see as we do this, it's not really gonna matter 
as you do this, it's still gonna work out just fine and you can always organize on your local machine. But so when you're starting a project like this and you're at this point, it is a good idea to have assets organized. But just remember at this point, it's okay to create placeholder images or just use what's already there if it makes sense and if it still represents the content. Now, sometimes I like to have just a few of my own images at this point. So if I go over to Uploads Now, I may drag over some of my old, own photos to take the place of the photos that are here just to give it my own touch. But I know that I'm still gonna change these going forward. This is just sort of me setting up a template and sometimes I like to drop my own images into the template, make sure they're representative of my content. So you'll see the way when I, I did that there, it just dropped in over the existing image. So if you see that, I'll drop it and if you hover over it, it drops into place. Now the reason why that happens is because in Canva you use something called frames. And basically all a frame does is it constrains where on your page layout something is gonna show. So if I if I delete this here, it may not show because this is the whole screen here, but so let me hit Control Z, nice undo shortcut, or you actually have undo redo buttons up here. But let me go down to this one, and if I delete this image here, then we'll see you do have this frame below here. And so if I were to try to drag something here, it's going to then snap into that frame and you can double click and then you can reposition within that frame, double click again to come out of that. Or if you wanna change the size of the frame, then you can start to drag out and these frames are actually grouped together so the whole thing is adjusting. But I'm just gonna hit Control Z a couple times to get back to that original setup. But just know that you do have these frames underneath here and if you come over into Elements, you'll see that you have grids and frames. Grids and frames are basically the same thing. Uh, grids usually I think are multiple frames together and then frames here are sort of individual ones. So if you wanted to add a new one, you could bring it over, you could drop it somewhere. I'm not gonna do that obviously because I like the layout here, but just know that you do have frames, you do have grids, you have all these elements that help you set up your layout and we're not gonna get too in depth into that here, but do know that is part of the design workflow within Canva. If you use it for a little while, it's really intuitive and it makes quick sense. So you'll get right into the groove. All right, so let me jump back and I can close out that elements for now. I don't need that. And so let me just make a few adjustments to this cover page here and we'll go ahead and get started. So the first is, I. I don't think I'm gonna need all these elements. For example, I'm not gonna have different issues and volumes of this, so I'll go ahead and click on this, and I'll go ahead and click, the, hit the delete key. I could also hit the delete trash can here, so I'll go ahead and click delete, and if I wanna click on this one, and then go ahead and click the delete, uh, I can get rid of that that way. Now this here, I may keep these elements, uh, and so if you cover over an element, a text element, you can click inside of it and then adjust the text. But if you hover a little outside of it, then you get this arrow that allows you to move it and you can move it around. I'll hit Control Z to get that back into position. Uh, and just also to show you, if you want to drag, click and drag, you can select multiple elements and then you can group them together, which can be helpful when you have design elements that you want to keep together. So maybe I'll drag this down here for now because maybe I will add a little blurb on the bottom of mine. I don't know, but in your templates, you want to give yourself flexibility. So sometimes you'll have elements that you may use or you may get rid of later in the design process. And also sometimes what I'll do is I'll make multiple copies of the same page if I know I want two different styles or two slightly different layouts. And then later on in the design process, when I actually create that final asset, then I can ch choose which of those pages I want to use. But for now, I think one cover is, is fine. And so I think this text is gonna be a little bit big for what I'm doing. So I'm gonna come under here and choose something smaller. So I'll set it to maybe a little bit bigger than that. I don't know, I can always adjust that later, but so I'll go ahead and select, set that for, for now. Go ahead under here. I will keep these images, they're fine as placeholders for now. I will drop in my own later. This is going to be the table of contents. And so what I think I want to do is to be able to have about maybe eight or so recipes on each page of the table of contents. And then if I need multiple pages, I can always have a second page uh, for my table of contents. So what I'll go ahead and do now is I'm going to grab, and I wanna make sure that this is all grouped together. So I'm gonna group all that together. And then I'm gonna hover over it until I see that move icon. So let me show you again. So if I hover over and then get that move icon, then I will do Shift and Alt. And that's letting me create a copy of that. And again, as you drag things around in Canva, 
you get these automatic snap to lines a lot of the time if you're centering things if you're aligning things so they really do help you keep things aligned and organized and you can also use that shift keyboard shortcut if you hold down shift and you drag something out then you're going to drag it either in a horizontal or in a vertical line so that also helps but so what i'm going to do now is let me just get rid of these other ones for a moment hit delete Get those, hit delete. Now I have this top section grouped, so I know I can copy it all at once. So a little copy trick is if you're over a group or an item that you want to copy, go ahead and click on it, and then once you get this, this sort of icon here, hold down Alt and drag out, and it will drag out a copy. So I'm going to hold down Alt and also Shift so that I'm dragging straight down. And then I will do that a sec. That's another time for three items, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, you'll notice I did not get the spacing of these perfect, but that's fine because I know I can fix that later. I wanted them aligned this way, which is why I was holding down that shift key. But so now what I'll do is I'll get this last one aligned on the bottom and I'll get this top one aligned even with the top. And if I want to equal out all the space in between them, all I have to do now is select them all. Then I'm going to come up here under position and choose this option here and it's going to space that evenly vertically. So I think that is going to be a really good table of contents page and then whenever I'm creating a recipe book if I need to duplicate this if I have more than eight recipes that's going to be easy to do. But so this alone as part of this initial template works great. But so maybe one last change or two I want to make here. This text here if I were to come in here and type out a recipe name. So I'm just going to call this recipe name because this will be where my recipe goes. If it starts to get longer, I think I do run the risk of having some of my recipes sort of go to a second line. I'd really rather keep them nice and clean on one line. So what I'm going to do is with that selected there, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to come under spacing and this letter spacing, I think if I set this letter spacing down to zero, maybe even to minus 10, minus 10, zero, I'll try zero. So I'm going to set that to zero. And you know what? I should have done that before I dragged all these out because now I'm going to have to redo all these. So you know what? You're going to make these mistakes as you're setting up your initial template. But if you make the changes now, so that they're set and so that you're pretty sure you have it the way that's going to work for you going forward even though you spend a little bit more time now you're really going to save time going forward because i want to set this letter spacing once and not every time i put in a new recipe so i'm getting it set now the way i want it and then again i'll just do this click this trick real quick uh, alt drag one two three four let's try that again Sometimes you lose it. Five, six, seven. This one lined up at the bottom. And then I'm going to grab all these and again use that positioning trick. So there, I think that now has the table of contents page the way I'm going to want it. Wait, hold up. I'll take that back. I thought of one more thing. And, and you may find that you do sometimes, after the fact, think of other things you want to add into your template. And just remember, you can come back and you can improve your template because you're always going to keep your template file separate from your final asset. So when we actually go to create this recipe book, I'm going to use this template as a starting point, but then it's going to make a copy for the actual project. Okay, so here's the one other additional item I want to come in here. So I'm going to come in under Elements. And I'm just going to come down under shapes. And so you have all these different things, grid shapes. I'm just going to grab this rectangle. If you click on it, it'll put a rectangle over here. I'm going to make this a lot smaller. And I just want something in here that is going to show which page this particular recipe is on. So I'll make that a little bit smaller because it just has to really be that corner, maybe something like that, the color. Maybe I'll pick something like this green, and that's fine. And then, so for text, I'm gonna just grab some text, add a heading. Actually, let me get rid of that. So, Control Z to undo what I just did. Get rid of that heading. I'll come in here, and I'll ungroup this temporarily. 
because I just want to keep the same font. So if I grab this and just drag this over, I know it's giving me what I want. Maybe I will make this item here slightly bigger, maybe like 18. And I think I lost that behind here, didn't I? So let me try sending this to the back, control. And if you use control plus your left and right brackets, you can move things up and down in the layer stack. So let me just show you that again. So I'm on my thing here, my, my little shape, my rectangle. And if you come up here, you can see where it is in the layer stack and you can move it forward or backward. So if I move it forward, it'll be on top of that text. I want it behind the text. And again, control plus your bracket keys, you can use a keyboard shortcut to do that as well. So I have that, but I don't want this color. So let me just come in here with this text selected. Let me just choose a white for my text. And then I do want to position it sort of in between. And so again, if you have something and you want to reposition it, you can just sort of click and then you can nudge it with your arrow keys. Or if you shift nudge it, it'll move it 10 pixels at a time. So that's shift and your left, right, up and down arrow keys. Or if you just use left, right, up and down arrow keys, it'll move things one pixel at a time. So I have it the way I want it. I'm going to grab it now. It's also selecting this other thing. I don't want it to select this. So I'm going to control click to get rid of that from my selection. Actually shift click. Let me try it again. Select these. I'm going to shift click to get rid of this part. And so now I just have these two items selected. I will group those and then I'm going to grab alt, drag this down, alt, drag this down. And again, I may not get the positioning exactly right. This one looks like it needs to be nudged up just a little bit. So I'll nudge it into position. This one here looks like it needs to be nudged down a little bit. So I'll nudge it like that. And again, if you ever want to see better, you can come here and you can, whoops, I hit the wrong button. Let me X out of that for a second. Click on the percentage and you could view it 300%, right? And then just sort of position this here. And then you really could make sure that things are exactly, you can see this one is positioned perfectly. This one is actually slightly above oops, where I need it to be. So let me click until I get that bounding box and click again. So I'm just on that. That's good. So again, if you click and you end up inside text, that's not going to let you move it. You have to get until you just see that and then you click again and then nudge it into position. And then everything's perfect now. So I'll go ahead and go back into fit the view and things are looking pretty good. I'm not even concerned about my, the page number now in the corner, even though they all say seven, obviously they're gonna be different pages, but I know I'm gonna to have to change that each time anyway. So as far as my template goes, that's good to go. Okay, so next we're just gonna slide down and work on the actual pages that are gonna hold the recipe design. And this is again, where sometimes you can set up variations and then at the time of actual final design, you can decide what you want. I have it set up now where I'm going to create sort of a two-page spread where we have slightly bigger pictures and this one may have sort of a blurb and the ingredients and this one might have another picture and then maybe instructions. But I think that I also want another simpler one where it just has the ingredients, the recipe, everything, all the instructions on one page. So I'm going to go ahead and take this page here and I will come up here and I will copy this page. So now I have two versions of that and now I'm gonna create these three different versions. Again, the first two will sort of be a two page layout and then the third one is just gonna be a one page layout. So I'll come up here to the top and so picture is fine, it can stay there for now. I don't think I'm gonna need this particular block of text so I will delete that Then I will take this. I'm just gonna slide this up, snap it up there. And again, this side here, I'm gonna copy this I'm going to bring it over here, get it to line up with that. Then, of course, I don't want it to spill over to the other side, so I'm going to make that a little narrower so we have a little space in between. And so I'm going to hit Control A inside of this and say, uh, let's see, this is a small blurb introducing this recipe one or two lines at most. So that's just going to be a little blurb. And then over here, I think this is where I'm going to use my ingredients. 
And so I will maybe have the font for this be the same, just a larger version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, shift and drag this down a little bit. I'm going to alt drag it out again. I'm going to double click, control A. I'm going to put ingredients in here. And then again, I want to make this be, so if I just click on that, let's try 18. Now I think to get something to bold, sometimes you have to actually highlight the whole thing. So 18 bold, I think that looks good. And I will maybe drag it down a little bit just to get it to line up over there. It's not lining up. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. And so this here, I think I want to make sure that this sort of is even with this over here. So that's good. And then, of course, my ingredients are just going to be a, a bulleted list. So maybe I'll just go ahead now and hit Control A and just type in some placeholders. So ingredient one, ingredient two. And I'm not worrying about if I mess up spelling or anything like that at this point. Um, just see, that's, that's nowhere I'm making all kinds of mistakes as I type out here quickly. Ingredient three, and then maybe I'll just control A all that, and I'm just going to paste some more. Oops, see, I'm making all kinds of mistakes. That's that's okay. Paste, nope, didn't work. So let's control A, control C, that's uh, select all, copy all, and then paste, paste. And all I'm doing here is I, I want to make sure I build out this template in a way where I know I have enough space. Uh, so some of these ingredients might be longer, or maybe I can have two rows. I just wanna come up with something where I know it's gonna work for all of my pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and do something like that. If you come up here, I can just add it so it's a bulleted list. And then I have it lined up here, but it doesn't make as much sense with this floating up here. So I should either bring this down and I think that's what I'll do. So I think I'll bring this down, something like that. That looks good enough to me. I could I could align it here, or actually maybe I maybe I'll undo that, and maybe I'll take that back up, and then I'll just bring this up here, just so that I have more room if I have extra ingredients. And again, I'm trying to make a design that looks good, but how professional you want to get and how perfect you want to get in your layout, that's really up to you. Um, for a recipe book like this, it's going to be a free giveaway. I want it to be high quality. At the same time, I'm not going to maybe go crazy trying to make the perfect, perfect design. So down here, maybe I'll use this text. I don't necessarily have to have this, but if I wanted to, I could put something like recipe URL. And then down here, I could actually have the www.recipe.com. And you could actually have your website in the actual URL they could click on and go to the individual recipes. I will lower that down a little bit. Again, I'm going through this pretty quickly. And the goal here is to get a good starting point. And then as you go through and you start to build out the final assets, that's when you can then travel back to this original template and make some of the little adjustments that's really going to turn it into a great asset going forward and continue to improve it so it's going to save you more and more and more time each and every time you use it. All right, so some of these text conventions and sizes I'm going to redo on this page. Again, this text here for the actual recipe name, I just want to look at the position and the spacing, so minus 10 line height. Okay, so I think I just want to make sure this is smaller because if I have something that big, then when I go to actually type out my recipe names, they're all going to take up multiple, multiple lines. And I'm fine if the recipe name goes to two lines. So I might go ahead and hit enter and do line two. That way I can look at the spacing between here and then I can use that to set this spacing I want to have some spacing, but I don't need it to be crazy. So I think that's okay. So I'm actually, may, I might jump, drop this back down just a little bit. White space is your friend. Okay, so that's fine for that. And so then on this page here, I know my instructions tend to be a little bit longer. So I think I want this to be even a smaller, narrower frame. So again, I'm just dragging in that frame underneath here. The whole image is still there if I double click on it, but what I'm doing is adjusting how much shows because I want all of this to be 
positioned farther over because I want to make use of this space a little bit better just so I can fit all my recipe instructions in here. So I'll just drag this out so there's more space. I will probably get rid of this blurb here. So I'll get rid of that. You could have something up here like I could have if I, if I had a recipe book with different categories maybe this would say breakfast or dinner or whatever because I do like the way it looks however I don't need it so I'm gonna get rid of it and I'm just gonna drag this up higher and I may double check what size I used here 28 so I may make this 28 because I'm trying to have my design be consistent across pages uh, that's a little bit close to the top I think I can move it down farther so that's fine Again, just in case this goes to a line two, I'm going to put that here. And I can see that the spacing here is different, I think. So if I check spacing here for this particular element, it says minus 10 and 1.12 is my line height. I think my line height is different here. So let me just, I think I might just set this to 1.2. 1. Ah, let's try that again. 1.2. 1.3, 1.2. Okay, 1.2, I think that'll be fine. So I may change this one up here just so that I'm consistent between elements. 1.2, 1.2. And again, I don't want to change these things every time, so I do want to get it right now. I can come back and make adjustments later, but the better you make your template, the more time you save each and every time. So then again, all of this is just going to be instructions. And so you know what I might do actually, and this will give you sort of a preview of how this is going to go. I'm just going to jump over to our website, which is mywifecancook.com. Check it out if you like some great family-friendly recipes. I'm just going to jump into one of our recipes, so this Instant Pot uh, Wild Rice Chicken Soup. And so this is going to show you sort of how you're going to do this and how quickly you're going to be able to update this as you go. So just for my template, I'm going to go and I'm going to grab our ingredients, Control c I'm jumping back over here on this page, control A, control V. And so you can see that they do fit there. Uh, I could adjust the spacing slightly if I feel like I'm gonna have recipes with more ingredients. Um, but I feel like for the most part, this is about as long of a list of ingredients we have. So I think that's gonna work out okay. And if I jump back over here for instructions, I definitely have recipes that have more uh, instructions than this but at the same time it's gonna work so let me come in here control a control V I'll go ahead and make that a bulleted list as well I'm gonna drag it out more to this side and then I will go ahead and grab this ingredient here and I'm gonna alt shift and drag it down to this page and then I'm gonna get it positioned in line with all this stuff so something like that and I'll bring this up like that okay so hopefully this is all making sense to you and you can see how we are just setting up template pages that then we're gonna reuse when we create our recipe book and, and keep in mind this is taking a little bit of time but this is the longest it should ever take you to make this the first time you set up these templates. Then once you have the template, you really have a streamlined workflow. So you're putting in a little bit of time now so you can save time again and again and again. So if you have a breakfast recipe book, if you have a dinner recipe book, if you have an Instant Pot recipe book, dessert recipe book, you can give those as targeted giveaways on content pages where it makes sense for that to be the giveaway. If someone visits your site for desserts, they might be more interested in a dessert book than an Instant Pot book or vice versa. And so you can create more and more recipe books so you have a targeted freebie to give to your audience. And if you set up the template once here, then each and every time you decide to create a new category and a new book, you really should be able to do it quickly because you've put in the work up front. Okay, so we're getting there. Let's see what else I want to do. This, of course, should say instructions, not ingredients. So I'll go ahead and make that change. I think I might want to drop in a page number on these different pages. So maybe I can just use this same font. So I'll just alt-click that down. Of course, I want it to be aligned to the right. And I'll make this smaller. And then I'm just going to go ahead and Control-A 
and it doesn't matter what page number I put in here because this is just a placeholder. So I'll just put 04. I'll make this smaller and then I'll just drag it until I can see that it lines up basically with that right edge. Not quite, but basically. And you can tinker and fold that around. I'll move it up just a little bit. And if I want that on multiple pages, a lot of the times if you drag and get an element selected and then you control C, if I come to this next page, let's see, control V, it will put it in the same position on that page. Now I've had a couple times where that doesn't seem to work, but a lot of times it does seem to work. And so it does sort of work on that page too. And so again, if I came down and I don't care about page number so much on the table of contents or the cover or this page, but on the interior recipe pages, I do want page numbers. So I want it on those two pages and then maybe up here again on this page. If I hit control V, it does paste it down into position. So that looks pretty good. It gives me consistency between those pages. And again, that I could use on other pages, but I don't care so much about that. So I have this page. This will be the second page of this two page spread and then this would be a third page but you know what now that I've made changes to this I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ditch this page and then I'll copy this one so I don't have to redo some of that work I've already done and then what I want to do is I want my instructions and everything ingredients all to go on this one page a one page layout so I'm just gonna grab this frame and I think I just want to make it I think we drag in I don't need the all the extra hanging over the edge here I think I want to make it so basically it's just like a smaller, pretty standard landscape, maybe a little taller, but close to a standard landscape just in the bottom left of the screen. And then I'll take these instructions and everything and I'm going to alt click and drag over a set over here. And then of course I need to drag that in. And so here's the other thing I noticed. Now, now when I'm putting both of this on the same page, I'm thinking maybe I do want my my font size and everything to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to maybe make this 10. I'm going to make this 10. Um, that's small, but I still think that that probably is going to be good enough. So maybe 10. Let me check my spacing. 50. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll split the difference. So maybe I'll go 11. So 11 and maybe I'll go 11 over here. So I just, I'm just trying to make sure I have something where everything is indeed going to fit on one page. And so it's going to work for all my recipes. So in this case here, I know that I basically can keep all this to one line. And what I will do is just center align this. So that's center aligned. And I'll just wait until it, I get that little snap mark. Let's me know I'm in the center of the page, basically, right there. And then everything else I can pull up a little bit. And a little bit more. And this side here, on this side, will be my ingredients. Ingredients. And then this side over here, instructions. Okay, so these aren't, this isn't actually ingredients right here, but so maybe I'll just do that same ingredient, ingredient X. And then if I just copy that, and I'll just paste it a bunch of times, just seeing that, yeah, I can fit a pretty long list of ingredients up here, and I could fit a pretty long list of instructions over here. So I think this as a one page layout is going to work just fine. So I may go ahead and move forward with that. Maybe the only thing I'll do is maybe some slight font adjustments. I think this could stand to be a little bit bigger. And then these here I think could stand to be maybe a little bit smaller. So I'll make these 16, I'll make those 32, and then I need a little bit more white space between. So again, I don't want this top one selected, so I'm going to shift click up there, and then I just have these selected, and I'm just going to use shift plus the arrow keys and then the individual arrow keys just to make some finer, adju finer adjustments. And that positioning there looks okay to me. So I will go ahead and go forward with that. 
And so I think my recipe pages are getting pretty good and I think my table of contents and my cover page are going to work fine. And then for this last page here, all I want this to be is sort of like a closing bur blurb and so maybe I'll make this smaller than it is now. But it'll just say something like, uh, thanks for checking out our recipe book for more recipes and content from us please follow us and then maybe I'll just do an at symbol something like that and then here I may just drop in some social media icons and this bottom would just maybe be like cheers and let me make this let me drag this up a little bit so cheers keep that lined up Melissa and Greg I run the food blog with my wife so just personalize it a little bit Melissa and Greg and then my wife can cook .com. something like that I'm not going for perfect then you can always come back and customize all of this but so then I do want to put in some social media icons that link out to our stuff so let me just come over to elements and you can search photos icons and everything's here so I might just do something like Facebook if I can type Facebook find one of these free icons and I'll go ahead and drag one out over here I'm gonna just resize it so I will just make it so it's 101 by 101 so Pinterest Pinterest and I'm gonna drag that down 101 Let's see if I can drag it and get it exactly 101 there we go and then line it up there and then I'm not gonna do all my all our platforms but maybe I'll just add Instagram and I think that'll be enough those are the big three usually so we'll do that again resizing that to 101 so I have everything nice there and if I wanted to just check my spacing just highlight those and composition horizontally even out the spacing oops once I have the spacing the way I want for these I could group these now I can move them together maybe I'll just line it up with that I'll take all oops undo that again you're gonna variably grab the wrong thing and drag it around but it's very easy to just come back and and fix your mistakes so there so so that's a simple closing thank you page and what I can do later, as I'm not going to do it right this second, but I will build this into a template. Um, but so I'll just show you. So if you click on any of these icons, so if you double click, you can get inside of a group, right? So see, I have double click to get on that. But so if I ungroup this for a second, we'll show you. So I can click on one. And then if my with Facebook selected, if I go to this link icon, if I enter in my link here, then it's going to become a hot link in the final PDF, which we're going to download, and it'll go to my Facebook page. I can do the same for this. I can do the same for Instagram. All right. So I'll get and regroup this. Let me undo that. Actually, I could re I could group. Ah, <laughs> pardon me. I'll I just group all these together. So now this all moves as one content block. But so. I think you get the idea and we've gone through and yeah it did take us maybe 20 or 30 minutes um, but that's probably because I'm trying to explain it to you as I go normally you could do this a little faster 15 or 20 minutes you can build a really nice template and now as we move forward in the next part of this you're gonna see how quickly that then makes your workflow when you actually come to build out your final asset so we are at that point now where we are ready to call this our initial final template. I say initial final because as I mentioned before you can always come back and make changes to your template and it's a good idea to constantly improve it so it will save you more and more time going forward. But So what I just want to come do now I'll just point out that 
If you look under here, it says all changes saved. Another great thing about Canva is it does tend to save your project on the fly as you go. So you almost ever, never are going to lose any of your work, which is great. But if I come up here, I do want to give this a new name. So now I'm just going to call this recipe. If I can type recipe book template. And then I tend to give my templates numbers just because I know I'm going to create multiple ones. So I'll just call this recipe book template 01. And so this right here is a pretty good starting point. And so what I'll go ahead and do now is I'm going to go ahead and close this Canva window. Again, if you look under file save, it does save changes on the fly. You can always double check there if you're not sure. And so I'll go back. Here we are back on the home screen and I can see right here, this is the recipe book template we just created. Now, depending on whether you're using Canva for work or how you open a file, sometimes it'll ask you if you want to edit a file or if you want to use it as a template. But regardless of whether it does that or not, you can always make a copy of a file. And so if I use these three little dots here and I click on that, it will say make a copy. And I want to make a copy because I don't want to work on that original template. I want that to stay untouched so I can use it again and again for future projects, improving it as I go. But so I'll choose make a copy. And so now this is non-destructive editing because now I have this copy of this. And so go, I can go ahead and make all the edits I want to this and I know that this template is untouched and it's still there for me. So now I'll go ahead and click in and I'm opening up this copy and you'll see that it says copy. So that makes me feel good. I know that I'm not working on my original. And now I can go ahead in here and I can start to actually make my final asset. And this is where you're going to see all that work we did to set up the template really now is going to pay off and it's going to save us tons of time as we create this recipe book. Now, as I said before, it does pay off if you do some pre-planning. And so I know that I want to create an instant pot recipe book. Now, as I said before, it does benefit you to do some pre-planning. So I know I want to create an instant pot recipes book. And I know that I'm going to be putting 16 recipes in this particular book. I've gone ahead and I've sort of exported from Lightroom all the assets I'm going to need. And so I have those. And so now all I have to do is set up the layout the way I want it. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this little icon, this page manager at the bottom. And if I do that, you'll see you jump into this thumbnail view. And this is cool because you can very easily within here delete pages that you don't want, add pages that you do need, uh, additional pages. So if I'm doing a 16 page, uh, re 16 recipes, I know that I'm going to need two of these table of content pages because they have eight per page. So I'll go ahead and I'll add, whoops, let's undo that. I accidentally hit the trash can. So then con again, control Z or these undo ones up at the top. So I want to hit the copy. So now I have two table of content pages, right? And then I think I'm just going to keep it simple and do this single page layout. So I don't need these two pages. So again, this is why you build in flexibility and options within your templates because one page might work for a design or maybe you have two different cover styles. And then you can quickly just get rid of what you don't need and keep what you do need for the particular book in question. All right, so I have this page here. And so what I need is 15 copies of this. So I'll just go one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And so just like that, I've built out all of the pages I'm going to need for this. And then we're going to quickly go through and we're going to start to update all of this content. All right. I may start by jumping over and I will start by uh, editing my table of contents. And again, when you're in this page manager, you can go into a full screen mode if you want to sort of go through like a slideshow. So it'll go like this and then you can start to page through and see your individual pages. Now, I don't know why it's losing that white background for the moment. I think it's just struggling here a little bit. So I don't know why it's us losing that, but we'll go ahead and escape out of this for now. Uh, so the point is anyways is you can come in here and you can go into that full screen mode or at any point in time you can close out of 
full screen mode. You can X out of this to exit page manager, or you can also exit page manager just by clicking on an individual page, double clicking, and it'll take you to that page. So I'm starting here on page two, which is the first page of the table of contents. And I'm gonna go ahead and start populating out my recipe names and blurbs. Now for the recording this, I'm gonna speed up some of this. As I tell you what I'm gonna do, I may speed up that segment but then you'll follow along and see, and then I'll slow it down again when I'm talking about the next thing I'm doing or I have something to explain. So I'm gonna straighten out my page numbers here in the table of contents. Since this is page two, and then my second table of contents page is page three, I know that my recipes start on page four. So I'll just double click 04, double click 05, double click 06, and so on, seven, Okay, now I will go ahead and put in my recipe names. And again, if you're organized, you'll have these on a list right beside you, or you can copy and paste them from wherever you have them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, after doing that, I would just come in here real quick and enter in my little blurb. So I might say this festive risotto is both vegan and gluten free. Now, as you're doing this, if you run into any issues in terms of spacing and everything, that's when you may have to start making a little adjustments. Now, if you find you have to make an adjustment over and over again, that's when maybe you wanna go back to your initial template and make adjustments so you're making corrections there and you won't have to make the little adjustments every time as you go forward. Okay, so I'm not gonna make you watch me enter in all of these sort of blurbs, so I'm just gonna skip ahead in the video now and we'll go on to the next part. Okay, so I entered in all my uh, table of contents, my page numbers on my table of contents, the recipe names, the recipe blurbs, uh, the sort of the little images uh, that go into the little placeholder images along with the page numbers. And so now I'm gonna skip on and I'm gonna start doing all of my individual recipe pages and we'll show you just how quick this is. So I like to take this sort of item by item and so I'm gonna go through all of my images at one time and then I'll come back and drop in the recipes and the recipe names and I'll show you just how easy all of that is. Actually, I may go ahead and do the recipe names first. That way it just serves as a reminder for me on each page what that recipe is gonna be. be. So again, I just did this for the table of contents, but I'm gonna do it again real quick for the ones here on each page. So I know that this starts with pumpkin risotto. Risotto, and again, I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead in the video so you don't have to watch me do this for each page, but I'm gonna real quick skim through the pages and on each page, I'm gonna go ahead and make the updates I need to the name. Okay, so I've added all of my titles so I know what I have to drop in image-wise on each page. And so now let me go through that process real quick. And so what I'm just gonna do is jump over to uploads. And as I said before, I've planned out and so I have all my images where I need them for upload. So I will come under here, upload image. And I have this folder here where I have all these images that I thought I might use in my recipe book. So I'll go ahead and click and I will go ahead and click open. And as I do that, it's gonna start to open and populate top down with all the images here. So again, as I mentioned before, even though you may not have unlimited folders in the free version, it's really gonna be easy still on a project to upload all your images. You're gonna see them all in this upload bin, and then you can go ahead and drop them in over here. Now I'm working at home with a slow internet connection right here, right now. So this is gonna take a second here, so I will skip ahead for a second until this is fully done loading. Okay, everything is uploaded, so we are good to go and ready to roll on with this. And so this is where the really great drag and drop interface using these frames and then all your assets over here is really one of the great things about Canva and really makes for a fast workflow. Now you do have things like this in some of the Adobe software if you know libraries, but again, bigger learning curve, it takes a little bit more work, and here it's just really intuitive and for the beginner user, it really, really is a friendly setup. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start to drag in and again, 
it's very easy to try different images. So that's pumpkin risotto. If I don't like this image, I can try this one. Okay, I like that one better. And so again, I'm just going through my recipes, down through page, scrolling through my pages, coming over here, finding the images I just uploaded. Go ahead and drop them in. And again, you can double click and see if you can position. Since I have my frame basically the size of a you know landscape photo, um, excuse me, the size of a portrait photo, there's really not a lot of adjustment there. Although you can do things like uh, coming in and resizing this, scaling it up within the frame. So that will let you have a little bit more of a zoomed in view when you click out. So again, just remember you're dragging and dropping them into the frame, but then you can still make adjustments to the actual photo on how it fits within that frame. So again, I'm just going to go through this quickly down to potato salad. So just looking over here at my assets on this side, see if I can find one here. So drop that in, reposition that slightly, something like that. Reposition that just a little bit more. That works. Moving down, chicken and wild rice soup. Drop that in, that's just fine. Quinoa. Okay, where's my quinoa over here? So, gotta scroll down a little bit to see all of my images. Here's my quinoa up here. So we had and drop that in. Again, I may scale this one up so I can make it a little bit bigger in the frame. So again, you spend as much or as little time on this as you want. But again, it's a really quick process of just going through and adding all your images. Pumpkin cheesecake, boom, drop that in. Here's my white chicken chili. That one's up here. Drag that in. Creme brulee. Let's see where that is. Scroll down right there. I'll drag that in. Might make that one scaled up a little bit. So double click again to get within that frame. And then boom, right? Mashed potatoes. Saw those up here somewhere right there. Drag that in. Come down. Here's my ZD. So right there. Boom. Butter chicken. Okay. Let's find that somewhere in here. Okay, butter chicken, drop that in, hard boiled eggs, drop that in, brown rice, where are you brown rice, drop that in, applesauce, drop that in, pumpkin risotto, Drop that in. Uh, that's okay. I see I made a little mistake here, but that's okay. So let's see. Pumpkin risotto. And then this pumpkin risotto one should actually be my asparagus risotto. Asparagus risotto. And then I also meant to do turkey chili. I left that turkey chili off. But I'll show you how to fix this in just a second. So turkey chili. And so I'm going to come up here, and so this is my asparagus risotto. So I'll go ahead and drop that in. And then this is my turkey chili down here. So let me find that picture in here. Turkey chili, where are you? Somewhere. How many eyes times can my eyes pass over? There we go. So we got it. But so because I made that one mistake with the page order, what I can do is just come back to this page view and this is a good thing to show you anyways if you do make a mistake and have a page out of order or want to reorganize a page so after hard boiled eggs is where i wanted this turkey chili to be so i can just drag it and drop it into that new position and now everything is right so if you need to reorder pages you can just come to this page view and you can grab a page and just drag it and reorder it so that is another very handy thing so now i'll jump back out of this page manager so just like that, I think you can see how easily we're able to come in and, and drop in all of our pictures. Now I'm going to go ahead and scroll back to that first recipe in here. So I could use the page manager to get there as well, but I'll just scroll back up and right here. 
So here we are, pumpkin risotto. And we're going to use a similar process to very quickly go and update all of our ingredients and instructions on each of these pages. I'm not going to need to show you every page, but let me just show you how I'm going to do one page. And so for your example, if I bring up my blog here, what I tend to do is when I'm building something like this, is I'll just go in here and search to bring up the recipe I want. So I know this is pumpkin risotto, so I'll get go ahead and search. It'll bring up that page. Go ahead and hit enter. It'll bring up that page. There it is. Instapot pumpkin risotto. There we go. So I'll just jump down and we have WP Recipe Maker. You probably have a recipe plugin of some sort that's similar so that it gives you a list of instructions and ingredients. And if you have something like that, then what I'd recommend you do is just pull it up in one window and then you can just copy and paste over. Now I'm doing this all sort of in the same screen since I'm recording, but you, if you have two monitors, this is even easier because you can bring it up on one monitor and then copy and paste over and see everything all at once. But so what I'm just gonna do is control C, I'll jump back to this screen here, which is the where I'm working. And so come in here, control A, control V, I'm pasting in those ingredients. Again, I'll jump back over. Now I'm grabbing the instructions, control C, and I'll come back over into here, into the recipe book, control A, control V, and boom. Just like that, I have this recipe all updated. Now I'm not gonna sit and make you watch me do every recipe, but I do it the same way. I just go over to my recipe website, grab the ingredients, paste, grab the instructions, paste. And if you have anything where you have like additional instructions or anything, you can easily drag out, you know, a copy of this, you know, heading and change it to a new heading, put another list below it. So you can add additional elements as you need as you go. But the point is that template is right there and has most of the items set up and formatted the way you want. So you really can save a ton of time. So I'm just going to go ahead now and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop in those other recipes. I'm going to drop in the page numbers and I'll drop in that little note on the final page. And then we'll go ahead and I'll show you the final product. Okay, so I went ahead, I added in all the recipes, I dropped in the page numbers, I added in that last page and other little design elements I needed. And so here is the final product. And again, working through to create the template, you put in 15, 20, 30 minutes, but then you have an asset that really quickly allows you to go in and create the recipe book. So creating the final recipe book, which had 15 plus recipes, I was only spending a minute or two a recipe to get that final product. So it really doesn't take a lot of time once you've done the initial design work and you have something that you can use again and again. So here is title page, I just cover page, I just dropped in my image, dropped in some text, made a few little alignment adjustments. So then I'll just scroll through here. We have our table of contents, page one. Got the page numbers here and here. Table of contents, page two. And then we get into the individual recipe pages. And so we scroll through. They're all there. They're all updated. They're all formatted. They're all looking consistent. They're all looking pretty good. I'll just scroll through. And you see, for some of them, I had these other a little additional sections, so sometimes I made small formatting tweaks, right? But again, all working from that original template that gives me a great starting point. And then really quickly, I can go in, add the things I need, and then there it is. So all in all, a 20-page uh, asset with 16 recipes, two table cop of contents pages, cover page, plus the closing page. And then, of course, these hot link out to our website. And so then once you have it all done, all you would do is come up here under download and you could come here and I would suggest that you choose a standard PDF if you're not going to be printing. Obviously, if you're doing something higher resolution and you wanted to print it, you could. But standard PDF for something you're going to give away to your audience via the web. And so go ahead and choose that all 20 pages. You can download just part of it if you want to, but obviously you're probably just going to download the whole thing all 20 pages, go ahead and choose download. It'll take a second and show you this screen and it's just gonna prepare your design. This shouldn't take too long. And then it's gonna ask you where you want to save it and you can go ahead and save off your final recipe book wherever you want and then you have it to upload and use as a giveaway on your website using whatever method you use for lead capture.
So here it is on the screen, asking me where I want to save it. I've done this once before, but so I'm going to call this one Recipe Book 2. Go ahead and click Save. It's going to go ahead now, and it's going to download that. And you see, this ended up being just under 20 megabytes. So if you had something like Adobe Acrobat, you could actually make this a little bit smaller, I think. But under 20 megabytes for a 20-page document is not that bad, and it is something you are going to be able to work with with your lead capture software. So again, good final product. We'll take uh, one quick look at it here. So once it's done, I'll double click it to open it. And so again, here it is. And I will just quickly scroll through to see, yes, it's all there. Yes, it's all looking good. So that's it. So that's how you create a recipe book in Canva. I've done this numerous times using different magazine templates as starting points. And so I have a few different designs now that I can quickly and easily use whenever I need to create a new recipe book. Okay, so I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit the like button below. Please subscribe, and I hope you have an awesome day.